और कमेंट्स कैसे पढ़ सकते हैं कमेंट्स इसमें आएगा कमेंट आई इसमें आएगा ओके सर कमेंट्स लास्ट में ले लेना सर बैठ जा बैठ जा फिर भी यार क्या यार सर लिंक है आपके पास लिंक है आपके पास लिंक मैंने भेज दिया है सर उन्होंने मुझे दे दिया था ठीक है मतलब यहाँ का सिर्फ एक ही लिंक होता है ना टेलीकास्ट हो रहा है टाइम क्या हो गया My seminar topic is today is on malignant tumors of larynx 
and its management. Uh, my uh, mentor is Arvind sir and it was shown on uh, 18th of April 2020 and it was finalized on 19th. Uh, the source is come from coming Scott Fund, Stella Marin, Grey's Anatomy and uh, Larynx and Hypopharynx by Sultan Brada. Uh, let us uh, go through some uh, important uh, clinical and surgical anatomy of larynx before going through the uh, frank topic. The larynx is actually divided into three parts. One is uh, the supraglottis, and then the glottis and the subglottis. The supraglottis extends from the laryngeal inlet to the vestibular fold. And the subsite of the larynx involves the suprahyoid epiglottis, which involves the lingual and uh, laryngeal surface, the infrahyoid epiglottis, the eriepiglottic fold, the false vocal cord, the ventricle, and the arytenoids. The glottis part actually uh, ranges from the uh, vestibular folds to 0.5 cm below the uh, free edge of the true vocal cords. The subsite involves the anterior commissure, the true vocal cord and the uh, posterior commissure. The subglottis is actually 0.5 cm below the free edge of true vocal folds to lower border of the cricoid cartilage. The subglottis is being the only complete cartilaginous ring structure and is most sensitive and vulnerable to trauma. Epiglottis is actually a leaf-like uh, sheet of elastic fibro, uh, elastic fibro cartilage and it is attached inferiorly to the uh, thyroid cartilage and by thyroepiglottic uh, ligament and anteriorly uh, to the hyoid bone by high epiglottic ligament and there are a lot of uh, pores over here with this has a, some significance that uh, the small surface on the uh, cartilage has small indentations which is which is actually mucus glands projects and uh, this has the this is one of the potential site of uh, extra laryngeal spread of the tumor uh, the anterior surface is uh, covered by mucus membrane and uh, uh, then uh, with the uh, superiorly and forms the posterior wall of the pellicula the mucous membrane overlying the epiglottis is reflected onto the base of tongue, forming the genie epiglottic fold in the midline and laterally. Then another thing important structure is the Broyles ligament. This is actually present on the anterior commissure uh, at, the, at the lower edge of the vocal folds, which forms the Broyles ligament. And the, uh, and the important thing is that it is devoid of pericondria. So the tumor involving the anterior commissure readily involves the subglottis and it is rich in uh, lymphatics and blood vessels also now there are certain areas where the tumor can tumor of the larynx has difficulty in breaching and these are the barriers of the larynx now the barriers are the conus elasticus the contrangular membrane the ventricular connective tissue the high epiglottic ligament the glossa epiglottic ligament and the Broyles ligament Spaces within the larynx are one, there are three important spaces. One is the preepiglottic space, second one is the parapiglottic space, and the other is the ringy space. The preepiglottic space is actually the space which is bounded anteriorly by the thyrohyoid membrane, posteriorly by the epiglottis, uh, superiorly by the high epiglottic ligament, which is connecting to the epiglottis to the higher bone. Now, the tumor uh, may spread here through small perforation in the epiglottis. Okay, uh, which is directly into the uh, and or directly through the higher epiglottic or through the higher epiglottic uh, ligament. Other important uh, important space is the paraepiglottic space. The paraepiglottic space is bounded laterally by the thyroid cartilage, medially by the quadrangular membrane and supramedially by quadrangular membrane and inframedially by the uh, conus elasticus and posteriorly by the pyriform fossa mucosa. The content involve the laryngeal saccules and the ventricle. Now, uh, the tumor may spread extensively in this mucosal space in the absence of significant mucosal changes. Other space is the trinky space. The submucosal space between the mucosa and the uh, mucosa of the glottis and the underlying vocalis muscle is the trinky space. Now, it acts as a bursa allowing the mucosa to slide over the underlying tissue producing fluency normal speech. 
द अटीरियल सप्लाई ऑफ लारिंग इनवॉल्व टू इंपॉर्ट आटरी वन इज द सुपीरियर लारंजल आटरी एंड द इनफीरियर लारंजल आटरी द सुपीरियर लारंजल आटरी अरइस फ्रम दि सुपीरियर तैरो आटरी एंड द इनफीरियर वन अरइस फ्रम दि इंड इनफीरियर तैरो आटरी एंड द सुपीरियर तैरो आटरी टुगेदर वित् दि इनफीरियर ब्रांच सुपीरियर लारंजल नर गो पियर्स दि तैरो हयर मेम्रेन and the uh, it can be injured in endoscopic laryngeal surgery as it enters the um, um, paraglottic space at the anterior end of the aryopiglottic fold the inferior uh, laryngeal artery arises from the inferior thyroid artery and ascends on the trachea with the recurrent laryngeal nerve it enters the larynx beneath the lower border of the inferior constrictor to supply the larynx the venous drainage uh, This uh, combines the artery, the superior laryngeal vein, which enters into the IJV, and the inferior laryngeal uh, vein, which drains into the inferior thyroid artery. Uh, then, uh, which connects, then uh, the superior laryngeal veins through the IJV is through the th superior thyroid uh, artery vein or facial vein, and inferior thyroid vein drains into the inferior thyroid vein, which connects with the brachiocephalic vein, and some vein drain into the middle thyroid vein and then into the IJV. The lymphatic drainage involves The two uh, above the vocal cord and below the vocal cord. The above the vocal cord is drained by the vessel that combines the superior laryngeal vessels and pierces the thyroid membrane, and emptying into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. And the, uh, below the vocal cord, it drains into the lower uh, deep cervical chain through the pre-laryngeal or delphian nodes or pre-tracheal nodes and pre-tracheal nodes. The vocal folds do not have lymphatic, so early cancers here do not readily spread to the Lymph nodes. Now the epidemiology of larynx. The worldwide laryngeal tumors accounts for one lakh fifty three fifty six thousand new cases per year, and eighty three thousand deaths. The incidence is higher in male, obviously because of the uh, risk of uh, etiology of cigarette smoking and alcohol. The laryngeal tumors are most common after the age of sixty and less common under forty. The incidence of laryngeal cancer has decreased by 20% since 1990 because of the awareness of the etiological factors, and it appears to have the plateaued between 2002 and 2006. And this has been hardly attributed. <laughs> etiology uh, involves smoking, cigarette smoking, which is the most common etiological factor, and alcohol, then infection like HPV. Occupational toxicity like asbestosis, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, coal dust, coal dust, and cement dust, and low socio-economic status and manual blue-collar occupation, and genetic syndromes like Fanganese anemia, congenital dyskeratosis are the common other etiologies. The clinical presentation involves uh, one in a glottic tumor. There will be an altered voice by uh, affecting the wave pattern forms over the vocal cord. Now, any person with hoarseness persisting for more than uh, three weeks or should be urgently evaluated. Now, advanced lesions may lead to airway obstruction, causing progressive dyspnea and stridor. Hemoptysis is usually associated with larger tumors. There will be referred to otolalgia, which is which is a sinister sign suggesting a deeper invasion. Dysphagia and odynephagia are rare in uncomplicated glottic cancer. Supraglottic tumors, uh, where Uh, the presentation will be like a uh, lesion not extending to the glottis may present with a globus or foreign body sensation and a paresthesia in subglottic tumors which is a very rare tumor although has a vague symptom like a uh, globus or a foreign body sensation in the throat paralysis of the vocal cord can lead to dysphonia or may occur with shortened maximum phonation time circumferential progression may lead to dyspnea and stridor and direct extension to the thyroid may mimic like a thyroid isthmus lesion transglottic tumor is a tumor that crosses the ventricle in a vertical direction a tumor can be said to be a transglottic in four ways one by crossing the ventricle directly or by crossing the anterior commissure or spreading through the paraglottic space or spreading through along the arytenoid cartilage uh, posterior to the ventricle so a transglottic is, is at least stage d3 because of the cord fixity so due to infiltration of the vocalis muscle and paraglottic space and extension of disease subglottically to involve the cricoarytenoid joint now in a clinical examination how to evaluate patient clinically first we have to make uh, 
after history his taking a detailed history we will go through the uh, neck examination first where we check for the uh, nodes presence of any nodes any mass lesion or skin over any swell skin over the swelling uh, we will also check for the uh, crepitations which is called brook sign and uh, we'll also do an uh, indirect laryngoscopy if indirect laryngoscopy we will, if we if the growth is on the superglot if superglotus uh, we'll see a obvious lesion over there if uh, indirect laryngoscopy is not possible then we can go for a fiber optic laryngoscopy where we will see the type of growth whether it is ulcerative proliferative or any mucosal bulge is present then we'll assess for the cord status and its mobility the pooling of secretion that is the jackson sign and then after then after that we'll post for biopsy if possible and uh, under direct laryngoscopy we'll take a biopsy uh, now let us uh, go some go to some pre malignant lesions of the larynx the very early lesions involves uh, the hyperkeratosis and the parakeratosis uh, without uh, cellular atp or dysplasia for squamous cell carcinoma uh, Squamous cell dysplasia is a pre-malignant lesion. Mild dysplasia are minor and are limited to the basal one-third of the epithelium. Moderate dysplasia uh, displays more than two-third of the uh, epithelial thickness. And severe dysplasia involves more than two-third of the epithelial thickness. Carcinoma in situ is an intra-epithelial -neo neoplasm with full thickness of squamous epithelium. The cellular features of carcinoma is without invalidation of the base membrane and stromal invasion. The malignant transformation of these uh, dysplasia, so a, lesion, a lesion without dysplasia is 3.8%, whereas in mild to moderate dysplasia it is 10.1%, severe dysplasia is, or carcinoma in situ is 18.1%. Now, for uh, detecting these uh, dysplasia, we have some uh, diagnostic test. One is the Tuledin blue test to detect the dysplasia of pre-malignant changes, which is noted with 91% sensitivity and 52% person specificity with methylene blue staining it provides histological information and assessment of vascular pattern uh, human tissue can produce a lot of compounds that give fluorescence the difference of the fluorescence of the abnormal tissue is exploited as a diagnostic aid of laryngeal malignancy so we here we use an uh, a 5 dash ala or 5 dash uh, 5 amino uh, levonic acid I, uh, 5 ALA selectively induces the accumulation of the protoporphyrin 9 fluorescence in the tumor. So topically applied, it is topically applied with a nebulizer of, of 1 to 2 hours before the examination and a light source that emits a short wavelength visible light of 375 to 440 nanometer is used to induce the fluorescence. Protoporphyrin 9 fluorescence appears red during this imaging. The sensitivity of this test is 95% and specificity is 80%, but it has some limitations. It can produce false positive and false negative in scarring, hyperkeratotic lesion, and inflammation. Other test is the optical coherence tomography that help to examine the epithelium and subepithelial architecture. It uses near infrared light waves to produce cross-sectional images of tissue. The, limit, the limitation is the pen, depth of penetration is less than 2 mm. Now this is the algorithm of how to proceed for a laryngeal uh, dysplasia. So if it is a single lesion, we can use cold steel or carbon dioxide laser excision. If it is a multiple, if it is a multiple foci, then confluent uh, leukoplakia uh, or confluent leukoplakia uh, can take multiple biopsy from and histological mapping can be done and we can follow for and we can follow the patient accordingly the follow-up is in such a way that if it is a low risk if it is a high risk case like in a mild to moderate dysplasia or a severe or carcinoma in situ uh, for one year we have to follow for two to three months for two to three years for again for two, uh, two three to four months and to four and for next to four to five years we have to follow every six months this is how we follow for high risk cases for low risk cases like mild to moderate dysplasia without any uh, etiological factors like smoking, hoarseness or any visible lesion, we can follow the patient six monthly. We have to take care of the one of the important fact that the patient should be devoid of the, or uh, patient should avoid the uh, precipitating risk factors like smoking or uh, and we should provide uh, any proton pump inter that might cause uh, the, uh, this LPR like condition. So, okay. So that is also one of the risk factor which causes uh, laryngeal dysplasia. Then uh, 
if the, if at all there is any residual disease then as we can assess and after the if there is a focal mild or a moderate dysplasia then excision can be done if it is a widespread or mild or moderate dysplasia we can observe or can excise the excision is either favored by heterogeneous texture erythroplakia features of a proliferation or if the patient is symptomatic if it is a severe dysplasia or carcinoma in situ then it should be managed by uh, as stage 1 t1 disease now let us see how the cancer the pattern of the laryngeal can spread cancer the epiglottis tumor in, uh, in the epiglottis tumor in a suprahyoid epiglottis they are exophytic and proliferative in nature so they tend to overstage due to their massive size and ball like valve airway obstruction infrahyoid epiglottis it grows circumferentially to involve the false vocal cord and periepiglottic fold and medial wall of pfs and pharyngeopiglottic fold inferiorly an epiglottis growth extend to petiole and involves the anterior commissure and, and that uh, grow into the anterior glottoepiglottic cancer which invert the thyroid cartilage in a preepiglottic space is involved preepiglottic space is involved through epiglottic pores in false vocal cord the spread it spread upward to involve the aryepiglottic fold and arytenoid inferiorly it is uh, limited by the ventricle in ventricle it is a ventricular tumor is a very extreme rarely rare tumor where tumor invade the here the tumor invade the paraglottic space early with significant mucosal extension early pericondrium of the thyroid cartilage is infiltrated and invasion of the preepiglottic space and infrahyoid epiglottis is common the aryepiglottic and uh, arytenoid aryepiglottic fold and arytenoid involvement the spread of the it spread to the uh, piriform sinus or post recorded area and behave like a piriform fossa tumor hence uh, uh, hence uh, it is common this is very common in india and it is also referred to as marginal zone cancers now the glottic uh, tumor just in situ is limited glottic tumors in situ is limited by the basement membrane when in a glottic tumor whenever the involvement of the vocal cord lesion mostly glottic tumor cancer arises in the free margin of the anterior two third of the vocal cord the initial spread occurs horizontally towards the anterior commissure the vertical spread in the later stage superiorly uncommon because of the barrier of the plane passing through the ventricle inferiorly is most common and this is and this spread is actually limited by the one of the barrier the corner elasticus the corner elasticus is the weakest point where the because of the neurovascular bundle enter and exit the uh, larynx the deep lateral invasion occurs through uh paraglottic space with infiltration of thyroid arytenoid muscle and vocal cord fixation in posterior lesions of the glottis which is very rare there is a rapid invasion of arytenoid cricoid arytenoid joint and uh cricoid cartilage paraglottic space is then invaded and tumor extends vertically towards the cricoid arytenoid joint laterally it spread occur in the submucosal plane to involve the apex of the piriform fossa in anterior commissure it spread through the proial stigmen because of the absence of the inner perichondrium uh, the spread along the proial uh, tendon involve the base of the epiglottis superiorly inferiorly through the cricothyroid cricothyroid membrane into the extra laryngeal soft tissue because because a tough corner elasticus to the superior border of the cricoid cartilage aids the extra laryngeal spread inferiorly the subglottis in the subglottis tumor which is one, one of the a uh, rare tumor among the three uh, uh, type of uh, which is one of the uh, very rare tumor the spreads bilaterally and uh, along the entire circumference of the subglottis the cricoid cartilage involved early because of the absence of the muscle layer the vocal cord fixity is often seen in subglottic tumor distant metastasis is most common site for distant metastasis is, is the distant hematogenous metastasis to the lung the mediastinum is the most common site for distant lymphatic metastasis the incidence of distant metastasis varies according to the site of primary tumor the rate is 3.1% to 8.8% in glottic squamosal carcinoma 3.7% in to 15% in supraglottic squamosal carcinoma the supraglottic squamosal carcinoma usually has a higher incidence of distant metastasis compared with glottic squamosal carcinoma 
Now let us see the stages of uh, each type of carcinoma, superglottis, glottis and subglottis. In superglottis, the T stages in I, uh, is in such a way that if it is a T1, the tumor is limited to one subsite of superglottis with normal vocal cord mobility. In T2, uh, tumor invades the mucosa of more than one adjacent subsite of uh, superglottis or glottis or the region outside the superglottis uh, without a fixation of the larynx. In T3, tumor is limited to the larynx with vocal cord fixation or it invades any of the following postrichoid, preepiglottic tissue or paraglottic space with minor thyroid cartilage erosion that is inner cortex, in, in, environment of inner cortex. T4 is tumor invades through the uh, through and through uh, cartilage and it also ins invades beyond the larynx like trachea soft tissue of the neck including the deep or uh, extrinsic muscle of the tongue etc. T4b tumor invades the pre-vertebral space mediastinal structures or encasing the carotid. So in glottic tumors tumor T1 is uh, tumor limited to vocal cords with normal mobility where T1a is limited to one vocal cord and T2 B T1 B is tumor involved both vocal cord. T2 tumor extends to the supraglottis and, and or subglottis or with impaired vocal cord mobility. T3 is tumor limited to larynx with vocal cord fixation or invade the paraglottic space and or with minor thyroid cartilage erosion and T4A is tumor invade the thyroid cart through and through invasion of thyroid cartilage the same like the so, uh, supraglottic tumor. In T staging of subglottis in T1 it is limited to the subglottis. T2 tumor extends to the vocal cords with normal or impaired mobility. T3 is tumor limited to the larynx with vocal cord fixation and T4A and T4B is the same like other uh, tumors like in uh, supraglottis, glottis and subglottis. Now, how to manage uh, laryngeal cancer? The treatment decision of the uh, laryngeal cancers are based on the T staging, the site of lesion, the nodal status, the patient's profession, age, ECOG status, and comorbidities and pulmonary status. In T staging, the early T stage it is divided to early T stage, intermediate, and advanced T stage. In early T stage, uh, it is T1, T1, and T2. In intermediate is T3 and in advanced it is T4A and T4B. In uh, early T stage it is divided into supraglottis, glottis and subglottic uh, tumors where radiotherapy, transoral laser, microsurgery or open partial laryngectomy can be employed. In early T stage glottic cancer, local control is best achieved with T1 cancer. With In T1 cancer is with uh, overall achievement of uh, transverse laser resection with 92% and uh, with uh, vertical partial laryngectomy with 96% in um, anterior commissure free with uh, anterior commissure free free involvement and uh, with an uh, anterior commissure in involved uh, disease transverse laser uh, resection and radiotherapy both has uh, very good local control. In a T glottic T1 cancer, mid -cordal, if it is a mid cordal lesion, if it is a mid cordal lesion, then transoral laser resection is the treatment of choice. If it is an anterior cord commissure lesion, then uh, transoral laser resection. Then also it is the same treatment of choice. If uh, the if in this mid cordal lesion, if the exposure is not uh, adequate or transoral laser, uh, laser resection cannot be done, then treatment of choice is radiotherapy. If radiotherapy is also not feasible for the patient, because then the other options is open partial laryngectomy. This is the same which can be employed in anterior commissure lesion also for T1 glottic cancer. In T2 uh, glottic cancer with free mobile uh, vocal cord, uh, in a mid cordal lesion, transverse laser resection is the treatment of choice, and in anterior commissure lesion, open partial laryngectomy is the treatment of choice. If uh, the exposure is inadequate for mid cordal lesion, open partial laryngectomy can be employed where we use vertical partial laryngectomy. If that is also cannot be employed, then we can go for uh, radiothera uh, radiotherapy along 
before small lesion and CTRT for bulky disease if surgery is not feasible for any demand or the patient demands for voice. In anterior commissure uh, lesion, open partial laryn uh, laryngectomy is the treatment of choice. Uh, transfer laser resection can be employed if uh, if it is it is not uh, if the care care should be care, for this for care should be taken to so that to convert into open partial laryngectomy if cartilage erosion is present. Then other uh, option is uh, CTRT if that is also cannot be done. In T2 uh, glottic cancer with impaired mobility of the vocal cord, if it is a midcaudal lesion, midcaudal uh, lesion, open partial laryngectomy can be employed where vertical partial laryngectomy can be done. In anterior commissure lesion, open partial, where there also open partial laryngectomy where supracricoid partial laryngectomy can be employed. Or we can go for frontal, uh, frontal partial, frontal partial laryngectomy. If uh, open op, open partial laryngectomy is not uh, feasible in a midcaudal lesion. Then CTRT can be employed. Or uh, if uh, uh, the and uh, we can also go for radio radical radiotherapy alone, followed by a salvage total laryngectomy in patient who are unfit for um, open partial laryngectomy or chemotherapy in both the conditions. The recommended treatment for early glottic hemorrhage is. In T1A, the treatment of choice is uh, transoral laser microsurgery. The second treatment of choice is radiotherapy, and third is open partial laryngectomy. In T2B lesions of glottic cancer, radiotherapy or transoral laser microsurgery is the first choice. Second choice is the open partial laryngectomy. In T2A, tra radiotherapy and or transoral laser microsurgery is the treatment of choice. And second option is open partial laryngectomy in T2B uh, concurrent. Uh, radiotherapy, uh, chemo, see, concurrent radiotherapy and transfer laser microsurgery uh, is the second choice and third choice is open partial laryngectomy. In uh, T1, uh, in a early, uh, T, uh, early uh, supraglottic uh, carcinomas, it is again divided into marginal zone, infrahyoid supraglottic and extension to and if extension to the glottis if it is a marginal zone uh, tumor then we can go for transfer laser resection if it is an infrahyoid supraglottic tumor then if the patient is fit for surgery then we can go for supraglottic uh, partial laryngectomy if it is unfit for surgery then based on the end status either we can go for if there is no node we can go for radiotherapy if the if there is no we can go for chemotherapy and radiotherapy if uh, in supraglottic lesion, if there is extension to the glottis, then it is considered to be a D4A or B. Then we can go for CTRT or supraglottic partial laryngectomy according to the stage. In a T3 laryngeal can cancer, concurrent CTRT is a treatment of choice for most T3 lesions because it is preferred where no voice conserving option is possible. The induction uh, induction uh, chemotherapy followed by uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy in good responders and is done and surgery is done in non responders the chemotherapeutic agent that we give is 5 fluorouracil and cisplatin or doxycycline or we can give uh, doxycycline cisplatin or 5 induction chemotherapy is preferred over concurrent uh, chemo ctrt in t3 case where voice conserving surgery is feasible but non surgical organ is desirable and T3, if T3 is with bulky tumor with N2A or N3, RT alone for those can be given for, uh, for those who are unfit for chemotherapy. Hence, a vigilant follow up required to detect any failure so that we can do for a total salvage total laryngectomy. Supercricot partial laryngectomy is done for subglottic extension of, of disease or uh, of the disease minimal or absent with both arytenoid are free and mobile and no extension to the uh, piriform sinus and vellicula and retroarytenoid region. Near total laryngectomy is done if the disease is lateralized to the interarytenoids or retroarytenoids and, and there is very, very minimal or no involvement to the contralateral cord. Total laryngectomy can be employed for patients with strider, patient who is unfit for uh, chemotherapy due to impaired renal or cardiac liver tissue issues. 
open partial laryngectomy can be employed in, for supraglottic teeth relations with uh, preepiglottic space invasion where we can go for horizontal partial laryngectomy and glottic uh, teeth relations with paraglottic uh, invasion we can employ we can go for vertical partial laryngectomies in a t4 uh, uh, laryngeal uh, advanced t4 uh, laryngeal carcinomas t4a surgery uh, that is total laryngectomy followed by post operative therapy is employed we can give uh, uh, ctrt as an adjunct treatment if the surgical margin is positive and there is nodal extra capsular spread for t4b usually palliative and supportive care is given now uh, the goal in the treatment of laryngeal cancers are one is to cure the patient second is to preserve the larynx or more correctly preserve the function of the larynx and then third is to minimize the morbidity of the tumor morbidity of the treatment uh, functional larynx allow the patient to communicate with an intelligible voice to swallow adequate nutrition without aspiration and to breathe through the nose or mouth without the need for a stoma or a tracheostomy tube so the important for information required for therapeutic decision making are the histological diagnosis of the tumor the site of origin of the tumor the stage of the disease that is the tm stage the principle of open laryngectomy is one phonation nasal respiration and airway protection embryological compartmentation of the larynx is the basis of resection because the tumor is confined in the glottic or subglottic for a long time in partial laryngectomy we need required a unit to be preserved as the need for nasal respiration phonation and prevention of aspiration so at least laryngeal remnant should have an intact required and at least one mobile arytenoid open partial, partial laryngectomies are indicated in such condition like t1 t2 lesions in a select subset of t3 and t4 lesions and in, if the endoscopic exposure is inadequate and carbon dioxide uh, lasers are not available in open partial open laryngectomy types are one is resection along the vertical plane across the glottis that is in glottic cancer one is chordotomy with laryngeal fissure vertical partial laryngectomy supraglottic required partial laryngectomy with cricohyoid epiglottoplexy for supraglottic uh, cancer horizontal plane resection above the glottis is done where uh, supraglottic partial laryngectomy and extended supraglottic partial laryngectomy is also em employed it is for tumor going to the piriform sinus base of tongue and arytenoids for glotto supraglottic cancers where horizontal and vertical resection is employed they are supraglot supraglottic partial laryngectomy with cricohyoidopexy and three quarter laryngectomy all partial laryngectomy have nasal respiration and speech conservation whereas in near total laryngectomy the speech is conserved but no nasal respiration is there the contraindication of open partial laryngectomy are one is the subglottic extension where in anteriorly it is more than 10 mm and the posteriorly it is more than 5 mm and if there is extension to the arytenoids so the reconstruction in reconstruction it ensures that ap diameter is maintained so that no stenosis occur and when glottis is resected and any commissure a silicone keel is placed to prevent the web formation now laryngeal fissure with uh, cordectomy so it is the simplest and oldest partial uh, open partial laryngectomy for early glottic cancer and described by gordon bucks in 1853 the indications are is ideally for ideal for mid cordal lesions and no impairment in vocal cord mobility lesion should confine to the membranous vocal cord without extension to anterior commissure here we give a midline in vertical incision and incision in the cricohyoid membrane this is the uh, cross sectional view of the uh, tumor involved where we excise this tumor of the mid cordal lesion this is the um, longitudinal section where the uh, lesion is involved and the part of and the part we are excising off the mid so the laryngeal entry is through the cricohyoid membrane and uh, the cordectomy entails the removal of the soft tissue and the thyroid and the in uh, pericondrium approximate and the thyroid and the pericondrium is approximated after that and the mucosal defects is allowed to heal by granulation and later in few weeks dense fibrous pseudocord usually forms in that
Now, in vertical partial laryngectomy, the types are hemilaryngectomy, which does not involve the anterior commission or the arytenoids. This is the incision given in hemilaryngectomy. Uh, in frontal laryngectomy, where the anterior commission is involved, which involves where the incision, where we take off the anterior commission part as well as the anterior, the uh, front part of the thyroid cartilage. Hence, it is the frontal laryngectomy. The frontal lateral, which involves the anterior commissure and that actually crosses the other vocal cord of the uh, involving the anterior commissure. So, uh, some of the lateral part is also taken. Then, extended hemilaryngectomy, where the involvement of one arytenoid is there. Indication of uh, vertical partial laryngectomy is involvement of anterior commissure, impairment of uh, vocal cord, subglottic extension of more than 10 millimeter. Uh, in subglottic extension less than 10 millimeter anteriorly and less than 5 millimeter posteriorly, uh, inadequate exposure like verrucous carcinoma, cancer in the young, and uh, previous treated to the uh, previous uh, radiotherapy to the neck. Then salvage. Uh, another indication is the salvage of post radiotherapy recurrence. Like the criteria should be the lesion prior to the radiotherapy was should be amenable to vertical partial laryngectomy. The recurrence in the same area. There should be uh, recurrence in the same area and not should not be progressed. The remaining laryngeal tissue are supple and should and should be non edematous. And other and other indications are the select T3 glottic cases where cord is fixed but the arytenoids are mobile and there is minimal extension to the subglottis. The cartilage uh, cuts uh, given in the different types of uh, laryngectomy are one is the frontal and uh, one is the frontal lateral uh, front one is the frontal lateral area where the front and the lateral part of the, some of the lateral part of the cartilage is involved this is a conventional hemilaryngectomy uh, incision then uh, this is the fr uh, frontal incision in frontal par partial laryngectomy and this is the extended one incision the limitation of the vertical partial laryngectomy are one is the extension of the uh, subglottis where it is more than 10 millimeter and 5 millimeter anterior and posterior respectively then paraglottic space disease extending above the to the level of uh, ventricle and below up to the cricothyroid level extension across the anterior commission involving more than one third of the contralateral vocal cord and cord fixity associated with fixation of the arytenoids and supracricoid partial laryngectomy with cricoid epiglottal fixy that deals with the glottosuperglottic tumors and involves the uh, removal of the entire thyroid cartilage bilaterally along with the um, paraglottic space and it involves the removal of infrahyoid epiglottis. It is an oncologically good procedure but physiologically it is a stressful problem because uh, postoperatively patient can suffer from aspirations. So this is actually not advocated for uh, advised for a patient with poor pulmonary reserve. The indications of uh, supracricoid partial laryngectomy and cricoid epiglottic vaccines are one is T1B glottic cancers where bilaterally early glottic cancer with involvement of more than half of the vocal cord on either side, T2B glottic cancer with extension to false vocal cord or base of tongue that is glotto glotto supraglottic cancer with free mobile arytenoids. Then uh, in T2B glottic cancers where uh, one, one of the uh, vocal cord is impaired and in T3 glottic cancer where one of the vocal cord is fixed whereas the arytenoids are mobile. The limitation of the uh, CPA uh, supra, supra, uh, supra, 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 supra partial laryngectomy and cricoid epiglottopexy is one is the fixed hemilarynx where the where that is the fixed if the arytenoids are fixed. Second is the uh, anterior subglottic spread that is more than 10 millimeter anteriorly and more than 5 millimeter posteriorly. Then uh, glotto epiglottic disease extending above the level of false vocal cord either along the mucosa or the paraglottic space. Then previously tracheostomized patient um, and if there is a respiratory uh, impairment or any respiratory disease the patient is facing. Vertical partial laryngectomy is a physiologically safe procedure but supracricoid partial laryngectomy and cricoid epiglottopexy is an oncologically best procedure but physiologically can say can be a little bit uh, unsafe because of the risk of aspiration. Now horizontal partial laryngectomy 
horizontal parasympathetic laryngectomy the resection involves the false vocal cord apiglottis the preepiglottic space and one third of the thyroid cartilage whereas in extended horizontal supraglottic partial laryngectomy involves the resection involves the supra yes, all the uh, structures involved in the horizontal partial laryngectomy with in addition to the ipsilateral arytenoids and bilocula with adjacent base of tongue and or piriform awesome. the indication of the horizontal partial laryngectomy are one is early supraglottic cancer with freely mobile vocal cord infrahyoid epiglottis involvement early supraglottic primary with n2 n3 neck disease and early supraglottic cancer in very young individual to avoid radiotherapy in young the contraindication of uh, horizontal partial laryngectomy is poor pulmonary reserve impaired cord mobility thyroid cartilage erosion involvement of piriform sinus to its apex involvement of any uh, intraarytenoid or post cricoid region or significant involvement of base of tongue now uh, other type of open partial laryngectomy is uh, both vertical and horizontal partial laryngectomy which is widely accepted for transglottic tumors uh, the supra cricoid partial laryngectomy with cricohyoid opexy is the procedure done here where the indicate which is indicated in the spread to anterior commissure or across the ventricle to the uh, vocal cord or there is an impaired vocal cord mobility uh, with the freely mobile arytenoids or there is an early cartilage erosion uh, the, with intact external perichondrium of the thyroid then contraindication of the uh, vertical plus horizontal partial laryngectomy is a fixed hemilarynx like a, fi a fixed uh, arytenoids and then subglottic extension more than 10 mm uh, anteriorly and more than 5 mm posteriorly uh, involvement of uh, base of tongue vallecula and massive involvement of preepiglottic space where the hyoid bone can't be saved involvement of the piriform sinus involvement of post cricoid uh, and internal region prior and prior tracheostomized patient and poor pulmonary reserve patients now a small uh, now another important surgery is the transoral laser micro laser micro transoral laryngeal micro laser micro resection the indication of uh, transoral laser micro uh, microsurgery is um, leukoplakia erythroplakia t1 or t2 glottic tumors supraglottic and hypopharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma with uh, mobile free vocal cord localized residual or recurrent ca cancer following radiotherapy non squamous and non radio sensitive tumors deep infiltrating tumors with restrictive vocal cord are treated with open surgery or with CTRT. The advantage is that if uh, the, the advantage is uh, of uh, transfer laser resection is short treatment time and hospital stay. The cost is low, no need of doing tracheostomy, smooth uh, postoperative course, and voice conservation option is available. Um, based on the uh, resection, the Transoral laser uh, resection is cat uh, categorized into six types based on European Laryngeal Society. Uh, of the glottic tumor, of the glot of the glottis resection is divided into subepithelial cordectomy, where the epithelium is removed, subligamental uh, cordectomy, where the epithelium ringy space and the vocal ligament is removed, uh, transmuscular, where the epithelium ringy space, vocal ligament, and the part of the vocalis muscle is also removed uh, then uh, extend then uh, total cord then the total cordectomy where it extends from the vocal cross up to the anterior commissure uh, up to and with or uh, without the inner perichondrium then uh, fifth one is the extended cordectomy where total cord we will do the total cordectomy along with contralateral vocal cord where anterior portion of the contralateral vocal cord broil ligament with or without the petiole of the epiglottis is removed uh, then total cordectomy with arytenoids where the preservation of the where we preserve the arytenoid mucosa here then total cordectomy with ventricular fold removal where the total cordectomy plus uh, morgagni ventricle and vocal folds are removed then total cordectomy with subglottis where the, for those with maximum of one centimeter below the subglottis is removed 
the and then the last um, and the sixth one is the anterior commissurotomy with um, for the uh, and the part removed is anterior part of the vocal cord without infiltration of the thyroid cartilage. Now, European Latin Society of uh, grading of uh, superlotics uh, here one is actually the limited excision superficial a small superficial lesion on the free edge of the supraglottis hypoglottic fold arytenoid ventricle fold or any part of the supraglottis two is medial supraglottic laryngectomy without preepiglottic space where it is again divided into 2a and 2b where superior hemi uh, epiglottotomy and total epiglottotomy then three is medial supraglottic laryngectomy with preepiglottic space without ventricular fold and with uh, a 3a is without ventricular fold and 3b is with ventricular fold uh, then 4 is lateral supraglottic laryngectomy with a and 4a is ventricular fold and 4b is arytenoid transverse laser resection glottic cancer is the indications are t1 midcaudal cancer and selective t2 cases like glotal supraglottic lesion with freely mobile vocal cord and no anterior commissure petiole involvement 2 to 3 centimeter of margins are required for curative resection of early infiltrative cancer. So small lesions are removed in end block. If it is a larger lesion, which is removed segment by segment, so that we can preserve the normal tissue as much as possible, so that while getting adequate tumor-free margin. To prevent a web formation, post resection and commissure, which is likely to happen in this, so it can be prevented by silicon keel inserted between the two ventricle uh, vocal cord endoscopically using a Lichtenberg uh, needle or glazing fibrinous adhesion between the two vocal cord every 10 days post-op in short GA till 4 to 6 weeks or application of mitomycin to the raw area of vocal cord. Posterior commercial lesions, the resection of the posterior commercial lesions uh, section is, is very difficult. So the reason is the difficult exposure as the endotracheal tube obscure the view. So, cicatrization following the excision of the intraretinal mucosa may fix both vocal cord in adduction, leading to narrow ching and that lead to strider. Therefore, post commission lesions, unless very small and laterally placed, it's best treated by radiotherapy. The margin assessment is for glottic tumor margin, the safety is as little as 2 to 3 millimeter. Excessive thermal damage may give false positive results. So, need to prevent as pathologists report distant from the tumor because the pathology is distant from the tumor from the area of charring as margin. Transoral laser resection in supraglottic uh, cancer, supraglottic, which is supraglottic cancer with free vocal cord is best for uh, transoral laser resection. The early invasion of the preepiglottic space, mucosal extension of the disease to the base of tongue or pyriform. The margin resected need to be wider than wider than for glottic tumor. The positive margin has significantly higher recurrence rate in supraglottic cancer. Bulky tumor of infraglottic epiglottis should be resected in segment, starting by splitting the epiglottis in midline and resection of the preepiglottic fat. Tumor over the mucosa of the mobile arytenoid can be resected without resection of the arytenoid, thus preserving the uh, posterior glottic bulk. The steps in uh, transvalular laser resection in supraglottic cancers are one is small tumor on uh, suprahyoid epiglottis, epiglottic fold, and ventricular fold can be excised in end block. Infrahyoid epiglottis need exposure after resecting supraglottic portion of epiglottis, tra transecting it from one pharyngeal epiglottic fold to the other. Then the infrahyoid tumor is resected along with adjacent portion of the preepiglottic space. Larger tumors are resected segment by segment. By incision in vellicula followed by splitting epiglottis in the midline, resecting preepiglottic fat along with tumor in the vestibule of the larynx and then vestibular fold. If the tumor extends beyond the paraglottic space, then part of the vocalis muscle is also resected. If more advanced tumor, resection include base of tongue, pyriform, or arytenoid. If resection is extensive, then superior laryngeal artery is ligated to prevent post of hemorrhage. In frail and elderly, if excessive resection is needed, temporarily tracheostomy is done. Next is near total laryngectomy. The principle is in case of vertical extension of the lesion such that the uh, segment of the record ring to be resected and one arytenoid is free of disease, uh, near total laryngectomy can be performed. 
T3, T4 lesion lateralized to transglottic lesion with no extension to interact node is the indication. Now, a T3, T4 lesion lateralized cancer of piriform sinus with involvement of its apex and fixity of hemilarynx or thyroid cartilage is, is also an, an, is another indication. The contraindication for neurotoxic angiectomy is intraarytenoid or post required involvement. Mucosal involvement of more than one third length of the contralateral cord will this don't allow the preservation of sufficient laryngeal remnant for formation of shunt. The most the resection of the strap, uh, the technique applied uh, now the, uh, the procedure employed here is the resection of the strap muscles and uh, ipsilateral thyroid, ipsilateral cricoid, and upper tracheal rings. After skeletonization of the uh, trachea, tra after skeletonization, tracheostomy is done. Then, preservation of the uh, recurrent angel nerve on the uninvolved side, that is the contralateral side, is achieved by dividing the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and upper tracheal rings well in the front of the plane of cricothyroid joint. The perichondrium of the contralateral thyroid cartilage is stripped from the medial and to lateral side. Suprahyoid muscles are divided to skeletonize the hyoid bone. Construction of the shunt created from the laryngeal tracheal remnant, the excess cricoid cartilage with myomucosal layer. Shunt is formed by the tubing, the laryngeal remnant with three zero uninterrupted vicular sutures and the diameter of the shunt is around 6 mm that is 14 French. The pharyngeal closure is done and stomal maturation is and leprosomal maturation and stomal maturation is given the side of the stoma in near total laryngectomy. The complications involve the pharyngeal leak which is the most common complication then shunt stenosis and other compli uh, uh, complication is aspiration. Total laryngectomy. The steps in total arachnid involves incision uh, where Glaxorensen incision is given, flap elevation, neck dissection, skeletonization where infrared strap muscles is done, uh, then uh, devascularization where vessels are ligated, hemithyroidectomy is done, um, then airway transfer and then where uh, if the patient is not previously tracheostomized, uh, then we make, a, we remove the ET tube and uh, put a plexometallic uh, tube in the tracheostomy stoma, then uh, deskeletonization where suprahyoid strap muscles and pharyngeal, uh, deskeletonization of suprahyoid strap muscles and pharyngeal muscles is done. Then uh, next step is the laryngeal entry through the follicular by separating the mucosal fold along the epiglottis. The median glossal epiglottic fold needs to be divided sharply to separate the mucosal fold from the free border of epiglottis. Circum then circumscribing the disease where pharyngeal pilotic fold is divided and mucosal cuts are taken keeping 1 cm margin from the disease extension. The pharyngeal mucos muscles is divided in the same plane as that of mucosal cuts to avoid devascularized and unsupported mucosa. Then stomal maturation is done midway between the uh, thyroid eminence and the suprasternal notch. Myotomy and primary TEP is done and pharyngeal remnant and closure is employed. Complication of total laryngectomy, the early complication and late complication. The early complication involves hemorrhage, hematoma, wound infection, pharyngeal cutaneous fistula and pharyngeal leak. Late complication involves stomal stenosis, neopharyngeal stenosis and stricture, hypothyroidism and dysphagia. The management of complication of total laryngectomy involves if there is hematoma and hemorrhage due to a slippage of any vessel, we have to re-explore it. A wound infection, in a wound infection, we have to pick, which can be picked up by flap edema, erythema, fever, rising WBC count. So local collection, then it is drained out, uh, pus and gauze piece is kept, and then we have to step up the antibiotic. Uh, pharyngeal cutaneous fistula, if infection persists in a, uh, in a TL patient, then we have to suspect this. So poor nutrition, uh, low albumin, low TSH, post RT status. These, like we have done as we have done in salvage TL, uh, these all contribute to pharyngeal cutaneous fistula. The signs are flap erythema, high TLC count, fever, increased drain output with a ter cloudy turbid. Then frank salivary leak from the suture site is seen. The biochemical test involved uh, drain amylase or chondry swallow. Diagnosis is uh, mainly clinical in so uh, never allow a fistula to divert to a stoma to so because it may lead to uh, aspiration so pressure dressing and cuffed t-tube can be 
uh, used aptitude to prevent aspiration pharyngeal leaks is common in uh, is common in total laryngectomy and uh, and partial pharyngectomy uh, then uh, and reconstruction often due to tight closure of pharyngeal anastomosis the management is wound is open and the fistula is drain, drained away from the stoma the conservative management is employed for two to four weeks usually surgical approach is done in immediate post surgical fistula uh, and large high output fistula skin breakdown with exposure of major vessel stoma stenosis is another complication due to inadequate size of the stoma occurs 60 percent cicatricial due to scarring lateral shelf 30 percent due to lateral elements like sternocleidomaster inferior shelf like in 10 percent due to redundant skin folds it can be prevented by serial dilatation of the t tube a multiple radial incision around the stoma or set plastic can be employed or tissue augmentation can be also done neopharyngeal stenosis and stricture the main feature is dysphagia so that lead to uh, direct pharyngoscopy so we can do a direct laryngoscopy and esophagoscopy in suspect cases if present serial endoscopy dilatation is performed if there is no response then free flap reconstruction can be considered hypothyroidism is another complication where seen in post rt with tl plus hemithyroidectomy post trt salvage total laryngectomy post op uh, so post op uh, thyroid function test to be done six month post operatively and uh, yearly thereafter now the non surgical treatment plan of uh, ca larynx one is radio that is radio radiotherapy and chemotherapy the mechanism of radiotherapy is physical interaction chemical interaction biological interaction physical interaction involves the absorption of energy rejection of electron ionization of atoms and that in turn causes the uh, chemical interactions like production of free radicals and like and peroxides and these free radical species will damage the dna double and break the double stranded uh, bonds induce apoptosis and mitotic death which have forms the biological interaction the rt has no surgical complications uh, they preserve form and function and ability to address the neck without nodes without increasing the uh, the ability to address the neck nodes without increasing the morbidity and the dose usual dose of rt is 60 to 70 grays and 2 grays per fraction that is 30 to 35 fractions in 6 to 7 weeks the type of radiation treatment are definitive rt uh, 60 to 70 grays in 30, 30 to 35 fraction for 6 to 7 weeks in sequential therapy for induction chemotherapy with two drugs like cisplatin and 5 or three drugs like doxytaxel cisplatin and 5 can be employed over two to three cycle followed by rt adjuvant rt with chemotherapy which is given after surgery in a poor prognosis factor and is usually 50 to 60 grain 25 to 30 fractions over five to six weeks the usual chemotherapy in chemotherapy the usual chemotherapeutic agents are methotrexate bleomycin cells, cyclophosphamide cisplatin carboplatin paxitaxel doxytaxel and cetuximab CT can be used, chemotherapy can be used as uh, in, in intermediate stage laryngeal or hypopharyngeal cancer. Most common used regime is definitive concurrent CTRT with cisplatin 75 to 100 milligram per meter square, three weekly or 30 to 40 per week. Three drug regime over two drug regime showed 63% improvement of laryngeal preservation form and 40% and also survival rate. Locally advanced uh, laryngeal or hypopharyngeal cancer, the combination of chemotherapy used to reduce the tumor volume so that adequate mucosal and soft tissue margin can be obtained during surgery. Metastatic or unresectable or recurrent laryngeal or pharyngeal cancer or single agent chemotherapy is used to minimize the toxicity. Induction chemotherapy followed by definitive therapy is is used to downstage the gross tumor volume to increase the efficiency of the RT to act as a test of tumor radio sensitivity and to possibly eradicate the system micrometastasis. This is a trial which was conducted uh, in 1990s by a veteran affair laryngeal cancer group study group which showed that 64 percent they actually employed chemotherapy total laryngectomy with against chemotherapy with uh, cisplatin and FIFO followed by RT. So there were 64 percent responders compared to 36 percent. Well, for the failed 36 percent, they have to undergo total laryngectomy. 
the rational way to add chemotherapy to radical rt is based on the temporal modulation where repair where the where to in, uh, increase the tumor response to fractionated radiotherapy through repair redistribution reoxygenation repopulation then biological corporation where uh, targeting the distinct cell population or mechanism to induce cell killing or tumor regrowth delay then cytotoxic enhancement the cell killing by modulating the induction or processing of intracellular damage there was a trial conducted in uh, by rtog 99 trial 9111 uh, where rt alone shows a organ reservation rate of 67% concurrent ctrt they showed an 84% of uh, organ reservation and the induction chemotherapy followed by definitive rt 72% the complication of radiotherapy is uh, chemotherapy. The side effects of radiotherapy are most common is the laryngeal edema and grade 2 laryngeal, uh, where grade 2 laryngeal edema is very common 15 to 59 percent and occurs once within two years of post RT. Other complications of other side effects of RTs are like acute side effects and chronic side effects or late side effects where acute side effects involves the fatigue, mucositis, dermatitis, uh, dysphagia, uh, then uh, uh, delayed wound healing these are the acute uh, side effects uh, and gastroenteritis also uh, chronic side effects involves decreased salivation and it has high chances of secondary malignancy the for palliative treatment now note on palliative treatment of laryngeal cancer which is usually employed for t4b cases or stage 4 cases where one the and it also employed in other scenarios like in a patient who are not subject cannot be subjected to chemotherapy radiotherapy or any surgery when like in advanced ages poor nutrition status multiple comorbidities large extensive disease which is unsuitable for radical treatment or treatment failure unsuitable for salvage therapy and metastatic diseases the palliative radiotherapy dose is 20 grays in 5 fraction to 40 grays in 16 fraction the selection of now for radiotherapy cases, for radiotherapy and chemotherapy cases, how to select a case? Uh, the point to be remembered is that surgery and radiotherapy are curative treatment. Chemotherapy is use, is, is a useful in adjuvant, so it's a never curative uh, treatment. T, in a T1, T2 lesions, 80 to 90% cure rate in glotic, T1, 80 to 90% cure rate is there. In a glotic T1, N0, definitive RT is employed, T2, N0, definitive RT on primary site and prophylactic RT on bilateral neck. In a supraglotic T2, N0, definitive RT on primary site and prophylactic RT on bilateral neck. In T3 lesion, where in T3 and T4 lesion, T4 lesion radical surgery followed by post uh, radiotherapy is employed. And in uh, T4 lesions, usually palliative treatment can be employed. Thank you. Thank you.